welcome back to Red Glasses Talks, and we are focused on some critical questions. And the first critical question we started several weeks ago is this, who is Jesus? The most critical question anyone on the planet can deal with and find an answer for. Your, your, your eternity depends upon it. The quality of your life now depends upon it. It is the number one critical question. Listen to this. He, talking about Jesus, is the one who has changed the whole course of history. Even the date on your morning newspaper, if you still get one, gives witness to the fact that Jesus of Nazareth, a place, a specific location, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, lived on this earth nearly 2,000 years ago, B.C. means before Christ. A.D. Anno Domini is the Latin phrase meaning in the year of our Lord. Even our calendar uh, authenticates the, the life of the person of Jesus Christ. He was not the figment of somebody's imagination. He was real. He walked on this planet. And so if you uh, are struggling with believing that he was who he claimed to be, that he was the unique son of God. He claimed to be God in a body. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you're struggling with that or know those who really don't believe that, my, uh, uh, my thought is that most of people that reject Christ don't know Christ. They don't know the history of Christ. They don't know his pedigree. They don't know his background. They've not done their research. Number one, most have never read the Bible. They've never read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which gives the background of Jesus. And so how can you just dismiss the most uh, amazing, unique person to ever walk on the planet that will determine your destiny uh, and, and if you don't know anything about him? And often I have asked people, I said, well, have you ever read uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? And most people who reject Christ have never even opened the book. The second thing is I would like to recommend to you, if you uh, are struggling with coming to an, a, an understanding of who Jesus was, then I would, uh, if you're really interested about your eternity, then I would recommend to you that you read uh, Josh McDowell's little book called More Than a Carpenter. More Than a Carpenter. If you're really, really willing to get after it, if you would uh, want to do the research, then read Josh McDowell's book, New Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And let me tell you, this is authenticated, documented resources apart from the Bible. You say, I don't believe the Bible. Well, let's just go to the historical evidence about Jesus. But going back to the record for a moment, the scripture, the original source, this is what it says in a familiar passage, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Isn't that interesting? Now, after Jesus was born, so he was born. Where? In a location, Bethlehem of Judea. When? In the days of Herod the king. It's documented in terms of the place and the time. Well, we could talk about this for days and days and months and years in terms of who is Jesus, but to me it is the most critical question. But let me close today uh, with, uh, with one of my favorite renderings on the life, the unique, one-of-a-kind life of Jesus. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a, a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place he was born. He did none of the things one usually associates with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. 
he was nailed to a cross between two thieves. And while he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. So all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that have ever sailed, all the parliaments that have ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of mankind on earth as much as that one solitary life. Jesus. You think about that. And think about it now and think about it seriously. <laughs>